Well, we're really thrilled to have you here because your reporting on the census uh, gives us some information that many of us did not know before, and you can help us uh, with a perspective on where we're headed in this 2020 census. So let me ask you a first question and then everybody can get involved. One of the things that you've reported that Jim Galloway and I were struck by is that despite the fact that we followed the journey of the citizenship question in the courts, which which the Trump administration wanted to add, which the courts have absolutely said no to, despite all that, you reported, I think in the last week, that the Census Bureau is testing a citizenship question, and they're doing it a little late in the game, right? They, they do test questions, you tell us, but usually far in advance of the next census, and this suddenly pops up. Am I right? Right. The testing usually happens for new questions or any changes to a census form years before headcount starts because they want to really know how the public will react and whether or not changes should be made and how it could affect the results. Uh, but because the Trump administration made a really last minute push for this question, formally submitting a request at the end of 2017 uh, before the planned question topics had already been set, uh, the uh, Census Bureau was trying to figure out a way of how to get some type of data, some type of information to figure out whether or not um, it would need to hire more workers, uh, change its advertising campaign based on how the public would react to a citizenship question. And the plans were put in place before the courts made their final decision, before the Supreme Court made its decision. And the Census Bureau was trying to put it in place so that we'd have results in case the question was on and in case any future officials want to add this question for future census forms. I think you tell us that these test questions go out about half a million people or so was that do I have that right and about half of those people got this census question I mean the citizenship question right about a half million households randomly selected around the country to uh, ask to answer uh, questionnaires not everyone is getting a paper form most people are getting a letter with a link um, at this point if they haven't filled out that form uh, they're probably getting a paper form and half of those forms about a quarter million include a citizenship question is this person a citizen of the United States the other half does not Jim, are, are they trying to are, yeah. are they trying to generate some st statistics that 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 might uh, prove uh, uh, Tom Hoffeller's uh, kind of contention? He's the, he's the, he's the, the uh, North Carolina Republican uh, and 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 gerrymander strategist yeah. who 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 created uh, who, who who initiated this push for the citizenship question. Uh, for for state, various states, including Georgia, possibly to use. Right. The results of this specific test, and they're calling it the 2019 census test, have nothing to do with redistricting, nothing to do really with a population count. This is strictly to essentially gauge public reaction to specifically the citizenship question and to figure out how people respond, whether people don't respond. Yeah. So really it's a test to see whether or not asking the question has a different result in terms of comparison, right, in the, in the two. So one, one, one group gets it, one group does not get it, and is there a difference in terms of who responds? Is exactly. That about? And okay. it's, it's really measuring it's a response a, It's rate. a pure test, right. It's a response rate test. So but, it really has nothing to do, to your point, with the census or where we're going in terms of, you know, the count currently or what the next Right. It won't be is. part of the 2020 but census. I think it is good information for this. I'm not saying the timing, but I'm saying it's good information for them to have. Maybe they should have done it earlier in a different way. But I think it's good to know what does that question do. There's a lot of speculation, and there have been other things that have been talked about. But to have that real data to say we've actually run a real test in here, and we don't know the answer. So, I mean, we speculate right now what the answer would be. I think it's, that information will be valuable. But, you know, Mike, of course, in, in, right now in the age of Trump, it, it, after even the courts, uh, all the courts ruled on this, the president still insisted we'll figure out a way to get this on the census, and then he dropped uh, that plan when he realized there really wasn't any way. So, given all that, when you see uh, the reporting uh, that Hansi did here, you say to yourself, is there something going on that we need to worry about? And I think actually you interviewed at least one or two people who felt this, who were nervous about the same thing, am I right? Right. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of confusion because not only is there a citizenship question on this 2019 census test, but there are other Census Bureau surveys right. uh, that the government conducts, including the American Community Survey. It's an ongoing survey, and that does have a citizenship question. It's had a citizenship question ever since that survey began in 2005, and that's actually the main vehicle of how the government collects citizenship data to enforce, for example, the Voting Rights Act. How do we make sure the voting rights of racial minorities are protected? It's through the citizenship data collected from that survey, but people 
people aren't weren't aware of that. Uh, there's a lot more attention about what the Census Bureau does, specifically about citizenship uh, information, and so it's causing a lot of confusion and raising yeah. questions. Mike? Well, I think in a broader uh, context, what this as was just stated, uh, we're in a very toxic environment now where there's a high level of sensitivity around issues of immigration and citizenship. And on another plane, and I don't know it specifically what the timing is, but I would ask the question, was this a face-saving effort for the president who, right. during the run-up and throughout this debate, insisted categorically that this question would be on the census? And whether intended or not, it presents an opportunity for face-saving in a political sense. I mean, I, I would guess to say he's he's moved on to the next thing. I mean, Trump, you know, when something doesn't work... Really? He moves on really <laughs> fast. I don't know if y'all have noticed that or not. <laughs> I mean, you, you gotta remember, you gotta remember, this is a... I try to tell people, this is a man who was a New York developer, who became a reality TV star, who then became our president. So when you think about how he acts and what he does, you can't think about a standard politician. You can't think about what would President Clinton have done or what would, you know, President, one of the President Bushes have done. This is a totally different person with a totally different background, with a totally different way of thinking. And so he probably doesn't remember, oh, my gosh, the Census Bureau, they have to have years to figure out these questions to make sure they're right to do it. I mean, he's used to breaking things and moving fast. And so he just, something doesn't work, he moves to the but, next but thing. But you know what's, uh, the, uh, the other thing in your reporting that I thought was interesting was you talk about the American Community Survey, which has been asking a, sense, a citizenship mm -hmm. question since 2005. 2005. So if that's the case, doesn't it to some extent, although I know we're looking at, back at, at something that's already been decided by the courts, but doesn't that raise even more questions about why the, administ about the administration's uh, excuse for why they wanted the citizenship question in the first place? Well, that is uh, what the challengers of the citizenship question. That's part of their argument in court, which was there already is uh, citizenship information yeah. that the government has used. And we have to remember back the Trump administration, uh, at least the stated reason it said that it wanted to add a citizenship question was to better enforce the Voting Rights okay. Act. Can I move on? Because I know we've only got you for a limited time before you have to go speak at the conference. Um, something you've been reporting on extensively is um, efforts to mobilize minority communities to respond to the census, partly more than ever because of what Mike Thurman discussed, which is um, suspicions among uh, minority communities, Hispanic communities, I would guess in particular, although you'll tell me if I'm wrong, uh, at, at community organizations are out there making sure people will respond to the, survey, the, the census, right? Right. This is really uh, trying to fulfill a constitutional mandate. It's to count every person living in the country, regardless of citizenship status, regardless of immigration status. And those numbers determine how power and money are essentially distributed around the country over the next decade. So getting every person living in the country counted uh, is really a priority for a lot of immigrant rights groups, communities of color, because those are the groups that the Census Bureau describes as hard to count groups. Groups, that most of the public in the country, uh, a majority uh, white population, that population generally has actually been overcounted in past census counts. Uh, but the groups that have been undercounted are, are traditionally communities of color, immigrant communities, uh, communities who, for English, is not their first language. And so the special attention is being made uh, by the Census Bureau through advertising campaign and partnering with local community groups, including one that I shadowed in Queens, New York, uh, Make Throat New York. They were one of the plaintiffs in the citizenship question law. Now they're kind of shifting their focus now to making sure that immigrant communities in New York know about the census, know why it's important, and uh, try to assuage any fears and concerns about handing over personal information the, to the, the government. There's also a, 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 an emphasis on, on counting children under five, is there not now? This yes, one of the uh, most undercounted groups are children under five, and a lot of different reasons for that, and partly because the families are a lot more complex now, and so uh, young children uh, could be left out because they may be living in multiple mm -hmm. households, or folks might not know that children should be counted in the census. Um, and so the Census Bureau is trying to um, encourage uh, families to make sure that young children under five are counted. And as a local elected official, be a, literally hundreds of millions of dollars are hanging in mm -hmm. the balance in terms of federal appropriations uh, to local and state governments yeah. to serve and support various populations. Uh, having served in the school district, one of the things that surprises most people is there's no citizenship test in terms of providing public education to children. You cannot inquire as to the citizenship status of a child or a parent 
if they present themselves uh, at a schoolhouse door. You must provide them with education. So you've got to have funds. Yes. So they've got to be counted so the money uh, for your school, what, whatever uh, funding is coming your yeah, way, takes yes. them into account. And typically mm -hmm. children who speak English as a second language, that presents a mm -hmm. greater challenge. That's why the funding is so necessary. Oh, absolutely. I mean, everyone should be counted. And I think one of the things I learned in your reporting was that the Census Bureau actually can't share information about citizenship status. Is that correct? And if so, like for 72 years? Or what's the, what is the regulation around what information can be shared? So the protections are under Title 13 of the U.S. Code. And specifically, the Census Bureau cannot share responses identifying individuals, whether they be about citizenship, uh, which the 2020 Census will not be collecting information about uh, through the questionnaire, but uh, race, ethnicity, uh, people's ages, for example. Information identifying individuals cannot be shared until 72 years after that information is collected. If you've done any genealogy research into your family <laughs> tree, uh, you may have seen old census records, but you have to wait 72 oh, years okay. before you can actually see uh, your <laughs> <laughs> great grandparents' uh, name, for example, exactly where they lived, who they lived with. Right. But in general, the Census Bureau can release information, anonymized information about specific demographic groups at a level as local as a local neighborhood. Right. Um, and that is released uh, regularly, and that's what redistricting officials use in part to draw new voting maps. But also helps, to your point, if you have all the, the children under five and you know who's coming up in your schools, yes. you can plan properly to know Absolutely. in three years how many people you're going to have to have in elementary school. But I think it's really important that people understand that, that everyone should be counted because because there is no one going to track them down personally. And I think, uh, quite frankly, part of the, I think, um, the, the sadness about this ongoing discussion is that a lot of people have gotten misinformation and have become scared for reasons that they shouldn't be scared. And so I, hopefully people will go out and make sure that they are counted in the census because it is really important. Jim, please help me if I don't walk you through this properly. But I think when we've talked census before, you've um, made the point that it's one thing to count every individual regardless of their status in this country and understand that, that federal funds are going to be distributed on that basis. It's another thing to look at um, how they figure into um, redistricting, congressional right. redistricting, if they're not voters. Um, and, and, and so there's kind of a, a parallel track there. And those, yet those figures are used to determine whether we add or lose a member of Congress, for instance, electoral college right. votes for a state, right? Right, right, right. Uh, what opponents of the citizenship question were, 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 were alleging is that this is basically, uh, this was a Republican effort to build a database that state governments could use. Not, 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 uh, not, this would not apply to federal redistricting, but state governments could use citizenship counts as a basis for their own redistricting. Ah, it's legislative, not congressional. Legislative, gotcha. school board, oh, county commission, gotcha. c city council. That was, that was, that was the, that was the kind of the, 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 and the genesis of that was, was Tom Hoffeller. Hansi, can you weigh in on that? Sure. This is uh, Thomas Hoffler, a GOP redistricting strategist. He died uh, in August, last August, and his hard drive surfaced as part of these uh, lawsuits over the citizenship question. And one of these documents that were part of, of these hard drives included an unpublished study where he said that if uh, voting districts were drawn based on not the total residents uh, of a given area, but on uh, only citizens old enough to vote, eligible right. voters, that would produce uh, essentially political maps that would be, quote, advantageous to Republicans and non-Hispanic whites. And it's important to point out that even though the Trump administration is no longer pushing for a citizenship question on the 2020 census, that it is still moving forward with another way of getting the citizenship, citizenship information that uh, Thomas Hoffler uh, outlined said is necessary in order to do this, uh, this strategy. And this is through existing government records from right. other federal agencies, including the Social Security Administration, Department of Homeland Security, and the State Department. Those are records that actually last year, the Trump administration authorized the Census Bureau to start collecting, compiling, and now uh, the Census Bureau has formal uh, instructions to prepare that information to release to redistricting officials uh, in 2021. Um, before we take a break uh, and before we have to uh, say goodbye to Hansi, Mike, uh, he talked about organizations across the country that are working to ensure uh, people respond to the census. So what, what kind of efforts are underway in DeKalb County? A significant effort is underway, uh, being led by uh, our Commissioner Larry Johnson. We recognize the importance, particularly in a county uh, such as DeKalb, where we have a large immigrant population, 
uh, within our jurisdiction. It is extremely important for DeKalb, and Atlanta is doing the same uh, because we know the, the, the significance of undercounting uh, people of color. And it's redistricting, too. Uh, you all have been through the process in the Georgia General Assembly as a reporter, and Jim both, and me as a uh, legislator. There's nothing uh, more intense and with so much at stake than reapportionment, and particularly in a state like Georgia that is undergoing a major transition. Five, 10,000 residents in a specific part of the state can literally shift control of a house or a Senate yeah. or a commission right. or a school board. All right. Um, Hansi Lo Wang, we're really grateful uh, uh, that you stopped in for a few minutes to talk with us about your beat. Um, people can read your stories, listen to your stories on the NPR website, obviously. Uh, is there a specific you, uh, NPR.org, but is there a slash that they can go to to get to you specifically? I, I can't think of it off okay. the top of my head. But <laughs> I am on Twitter. I tweet a lot about the census. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay, what's your Twitter handle? Hansi Lo Wong. All right, fine. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank Have you for a good time me. over at the uh, conference, Thank and um, we'll be listening for your reports. Thank you very much.